Hi guys and welcome back to part four. This may run into two parts. And what we're talking about today is bacteria and other infectious agents. So as the whiteboard says then, um, I'm sitting down, pause the video, go grab yourself a coffee, whatever. This is a really important subject. So I'm going to take my time in these next few ones and hopefully this information will help you with infection control. Um, the nail technician's job is usually thought not to be a dangerous one, but without the proper sanitization, both you and your clients are in great danger of infection from bacteria, viruses, fungals, moulds and parasites. The kinds of infections that can be transmitted during a wide range of nail services from the common boil to funguses that can cause the loss of nails to life-threatening um, conditions like hepatitis and AIDS. Um, when you learn what infection is and how it spreads, you'll be better prepared to prevent it with proper sanitisation practices. So my question to you is, what is a bacteria? Um, my, what I see as bacteria is um, they're a one-celled vegetable microism, um, so small that can only be seen on the head of a pin. Um, oh, sorry, it can only be seen through a microscope. Um, I'm reading brief notes I've written. So they're so small you need a microscope to see them. A single gram of soil can contain as many as 2.5 billion bacteria. Bacteria are the most plentiful organism on earth. There are about 15,000, probably more these days, species known of bacteria and they can exist nearly everywhere. They multiply at an incredible speed and a single bacterial cell can produce almost 16 million more in only half a day. Bacteria are found in water, air, dust, lint, decaying matter. They are also found on the skin of your body, in the secretions of openings, on clothing, on your manicure tables and on your implements and under your nails. So, like anything, there are, I'll just move this down a bit now for you, there are different types of bacteria. So, there's the non pathological um, bacteria that can't, can't harm us and are often beneficial to us. These bacteria play an important role of nature, of decomposing and breaking down matter. Okay, so they're good ones, we need them. Um, then there is pathogenic bacteria. Um, they are harmful. There are less than 30% of all bacteria that are pathogenic. Bacteria are most, the most common that cause of infection and disease in humans. Pathogenic bacteria are also mic microbes or germs, they invade, they invade living plants, animal tissues and feed on living matter. They breed rapidly and spread disease by producing toxins or poisons in tissues that they invade. Sorry if my pronunciation is a little bit off. So classifications of bacteria, there are three main groups of pathological bacteria and 
let me clear this little bit so I can write them down so you can see them. If those of you who are following this, you can then go and look them up. So there is the first one is cock eye. Okay, this. Um, then we have staff. Well, I'll get the spelling right. Cock eye. Then we have strip. Two. Cock eye. And then the last one is dip. The cock eye. So, in the three main groups of pathogenic bacteria, so cocci group, these are round pus producing bacteria. Cocci appear singly or in groups. So you have your staphylococci grow in clusters and they present in local infections such as abscesses, pustules and boils. Then you have your streptococci, um, they grow in chains. They, are, they cause strep throat infections or diseases that spread through and out the body, such as blood poisoning and rheumatic fever. And then you have, lastly, your diplococci. Um, they grow in pairs and cause pneumonia. So then we move away from that family and we go into our next grouping, which is the basil, yeah, I can't pronounce, and that's, I wish sometimes that this stuff was easier to pronounce. Okay, so then we have these two, the bacrolil. These are most common, so that's this first one, most common bacteria. They are rod shaped and produce such diseases as tetanus, influenza, typhoid, tuberculosis, and diphtheria. And then lastly, the sporella. Um, these are spiral or corkscrew shaped bacteria and they include um, a, a spirochemic organism and I'll write that down because again my pronunciation of that just died. Okay, so um, one example of these bacteria is um, syphilis. Okay, so we have that grouping there. So moving on from that little segment, I hope you all got that and I didn't balls it up too much. <coughs> then we have, um, we move into growth, oops, not the W, growth, and re -grow. Okay. Of bacteria. So bacteria live, grow and multiply best in warm, dark, damp, unsanitary conditions. The drawer of your manicure table, for example, is a perfect place to breed bacteria on unsanitized instruments. Each bacterium or bacterial cell has the ability to grow and reproduce. As bacteria are nourished, each 
barium bacterium cell grows in size. When it reaches maturity, it divides crosswise into half and forms two identical cells. This division, I'm not going to tell you what that is. We will continue. Um, I don't think that's relevant, but the division is called myeltohosis. I think I got that right. Um, the cells continue to grow and they are, until they are mature and divide, forming four cells. One bacterium can reproduce into as many as 16 billion bacteria in 12 hours. When conditions become unfavourable for growth, the reproduction of many bacterium types form a tough outer covering called a spore. They remain dormant or rest in, or in a state of rest. Bacteria such as anthrax and tetanus can survive periods of famine, dryness and unstable temperatures. In this stage, the spores can be blown about in dust and is not harmed by disinfectants, heat or cold. The conditions become, when conditions become favourable, they can begin to grow and reproduce again. So then we move on to the movements of bacteria. The bacteria can travel, as you've heard already, very easily. They are spread through air and water or through contact with contaminated objects, bacterial and Spirilla are the only bacteria that can pro propel themselves. They have hair-like um, projections which they move in a whip-like motion to propel themselves through water. Okay, so now we're going to move away from bacteria and I am going to talk about oops. So viruses. Sorry about that. That is really bad writing. I'm in an awkward position here at the moment. So viruses are path pathogenic. Agents, they are many times smaller than bacteria. Virus enter a healthy cell and grow to maturity. They reproduce, often destroying the cell. Hepatitis, chickenpox, influenza, measles, mumps, and the common cold are all examples of viral infections that can be transferred through casual contact with an infected person. Infection spreads when, say, for example, someone sneezes or coughs. Okay, acquired immune deficiency syndrome or AIDS is a disease caused by the HIV virus. AIDS attacks and then eventually destroys the body's immune system. The disease may lay dormant in an infected person's system for up to 10 years but can be, it can mature into a fatal disease in about two to 10 years. Unlike most other viruses, HIV cannot be transferred through casual contact um, with an infected person, sneezing, coughing, touching them. AIDS is passed from one person to another through the transfer of bodily fluids, such as semen and blood. The most common method of transferring AIDS are through sexual contact with infectious persons, through the use of dirty hyper, um, hypodermic needles for intravenous drug use, or the transfusion of infected blood. AIDS can be transferred from mother to child during pregnancy and birth. It is possible to tra transfer AIDS in a salon. Yes, you heard me correctly, ladies. 
through the use of unsanitised manicure implements. If you were nipping at the cuticles of a client that was infected with AIDS, you might transfer the blood to your cuticle nippers. Then when you nip another client, you transfer the AIDS infected blood to the second client and that client may get AIDS. Now, while we're on that subject, my rule of thumb is, that's why I use my um, file packs, because if I, as we know, all file, new files are sharp, if I cut someone with a file, it's their file. I don't use that file on anybody else. If I'm using cute, uh, cuticle nippers, like the case in point I just gave, and I accidentally made someone bleed, touch wood, it hasn't happened yet, I would have to throw them out. The only way you can guarantee you are not spreading that particular type of virus is if you have an autoclave. I don't have an autoclave, nor did I have a couple of grand to buy one, do you? So I would have to throw away those cuticle nippers. But it's very important to know that you can transfer serious stuff. And just because someone doesn't look unwell doesn't mean they aren't. So the next one is topic is funguses and molds. Okay, so we have three minutes left. So what I might do is I might pause the camera and make my part two video. So I will talk to you all soon. Keep safe till next time.